Welcome everyone, I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to wake the world up to what's possible, one brave word at a time. And here today to help me with that mission are some of the amazing authors of a new book that we have coming out. This one is called The Energy Healer's Oracle, Tools for Total Transformation. And before I introduce these beautiful women to you today, I wanna say a huge thank you to Angela Aurora Medway-Smith. Angela is our lead author for this beautiful book. And Angela, this amazing, powerful author cast that you have gathered for this book, like every time I talk about this, I get goosebumps every time. The energy in this book is other level, and the individuals who have come to the table with their courage and telling their stories about who they are and the magic that they do in the world. And again, I'm getting goosebumps again, you guys. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna need to put a sweater on pretty soon. Um, but thank you. Um, I speak for everyone when I say, uh, you know, we love you and we would not be here without you. So thank you for that big mission that you had. So who do I have here with me today? Caroline Mary Andrews is dedicated to facilitating people to find peace, love, and joy through healing, coaching, and dancing. Gurpreet Janega is a biotransformational coach. We're going to need to understand what that means a little bit more in a minute, Gurpreet. Sheila Applegate is with us, and she is an award-winning author, spiritual channel, and healer who's dedicated to helping you claim your most vibrant life and discover the wonder of our world even during turbulent times. Oh my gosh, there's been a couple of those lately, haven't there? Oh my, I can't wait to have this conversation. Caroline, you're going to start the party off. Tell us about the chapter that you wrote. Oh, and I got to make you unmute first, Caroline. <laughs> I'll catch you guys muted. <laughs> Hi. So thanks for having me today. Yeah. Um, so my chapter, the title is Shaman's Hands, which is a modality that came to me a few years ago and I was really thinking I was going to be writing about that but the truth of it was the arc of the story is more about the subtitle awakening your intuition so my chapter was a surprise to me I started writing and everything that came out was literally as um, one of the years in my life where I kept following my intuition and that allowed me to birth this healing modality. So I won't say any more about that because you'll find out about that in the chapter, but it was a real journey and working with you as our publisher really helped me as well because that byline really brought home the, the power of the, and the simplicity of working with our intuition. So I was, yeah, it was a gift for me as well as hopefully for the readers. Oh, I'm glad that you, thank you for saying that part. I think that you all have been getting clearer and clearer but i'm chuckling when you talk about the byline because i'm such a nerd when it comes to headlines and titles yeah. and bylines like i want people to understand super clearly what's in it for them because they're consuming books and videos and all the things right so let's get back to intuition for a second so this is something that i know a lot of people on their journey they may have had a connection as a kid lost it somewhere along the way reclaimed it as an adult maybe i know that that's been a bit of my story was it yours also absolutely i i used to joke i would spend 20 years undoing the first 20 years of my life and i'm 42 this year and i'm like hell yeah so as a kid i played a lot of music and being in orchestras and things like this it was a really high energy place but then being forced into school and who you think you're meant to be and all of that and then bit by bit through dance a lot has really helped me come into flow and bit by bit I've been knocked into being more in alignment, which is why my coaching modality is called Ascension Alignment Coaching, because it really is about feeling our truth, expressing that and, and being that authentic self. So I want to talk about the dancing for a minute, because what I know for sure is my intuition the connection enhanced as I was practicing body awareness, as I was getting back into my body. And of course, dance is one of those beautiful ways, right? What do you want people to know about that? Dance for me is one of the 
most freeing expressions of self I think other than swimming where you're being supported for me it makes me feel like I can fly you know I'm I'm moving and there's no constrictions sometimes for sure if I've been in my head you get on the dance floor and you're a bit like uh, uh. but as soon as like the beats there especially obviously with the repetitive beats that's the thing that switches our brain waves and that's it the flow happens and I'm I'm kind of currently birthing um some classes that will really help people connect to spirit guides there's so much for me that happens on a dance floor I'm like don't talk <laughs> I'm tuning <laughs> in and vortexes are happening and it's it's just amazing so for me it's one of the most powerful gifts as well and I think it's I think it's it's rated but the depth of what you can do through dance is is maybe underrated as well so I'm kind of looking forward to birthing that this year Oh, that's awesome um I'm just smiling about the visual I'm getting I think uh it's been a while since I've been dancing, right? And that for me is like my, the joy. So when you're in a vibration of bo embodied, mo you know, you're embodied, but there's a joy in the freedom of the movement of the body. Gosh, sometimes I think we take our bodies for granted, don't we? And then we can't move and all of a sudden we're like, oh, now, you know, um, so don't take your body for granted um, to our viewers today. Get in there, flow, move, dance, shake your booty, whatever you need to do, right? <laughs> Caroline, thank you so much for being here today. Gurpreet, tell us about your chapter. Hi. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Laura, for having me here today. Um, my chapter is the Divine Heart Connection in... And like Caroline mentioned, the byline, yes, I totally go home with the byline myself as well. It really made me think and it brought me back to my core. Um, my byline is tapping into the unknown. And I believe that um, when I was ready to write the chapter, I honestly had no idea what, where I'm going to start. This is my first book, official you know, book. And, um, and I think I just thinking about unknown really made me understand how I have been, how I, how fearful we get, you know, when, when we think of something that's not, either we are not, you know, able to view through it or we can control it. So, sorry, my meditation is tapping into the unknown, but my byline is embracing the, um, um, embracing from freedom from fear of embracing the unknown. And, um, uh, and that um, really teaches me. So, so when when I sat down and I started writing my chapter, the first thing that came to me: when was I most fearful in my life? I was definitely fearful many, many, many times. But this story is the one that really stuck with me because that's where my transformation started. And so I almost went to the roots of everything. You know what really? Uh, this was like where the onion peel started happening. So it's really my own healing journey it started from that point forward, um, which is why it's very close to my heart. Um, and, and yeah, I, I would definitely encourage viewers to go read the chapter. It's, it's just incredible a story of how I was able to overcome my fear, which I believe the power that, you know, my heart showed me that we all have within ourselves, tapping into our own wisdom, into that divine ocean, um, you know, is is just incredible, but it does not happen until we are ready to face our darkness. And and I believe at that point I was ready. Um, so yeah, that's that's really what the chapter is all about. Well, facing the unknown, there is um, there can be a lot of fear for people, a lot of fear in having to embark on change, which is of course many times completely out of our control. And I love that you used the ocean, you know, to kind of give us a visual of the possibilities because they are vast and um, you just don't even know what you don't know in terms of like what's possible here to tap into. So, um, and I love that you're talking about fear because that one's close to my heart. I've written whole books about the topic. I wanted people to be able to feel it as the awareness and fear in a, is an awareness a game. Would you agree, Gurpreet? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, being fearful is okay. It's normal, but 
I think it's seeing beyond that fear because that's where the real joy, the real growth is. And it's painful, you know, but it is where we have to learn to get out of that comfort zone, maybe even beyond comfort zone, many, many folds. Um, but I think that's where the real, I feel that's where we find ourselves really, you know, that's where the true potential is. And <clears throat> also I believe that as I embarked on my transformation journey, I realized the more I connected with my own self, the easier it got to tap into the unknown. And then it was really just a game changer because now I'm playing with the unknown and I'm liking it. And I'm like, okay, I want to see what's next, you know, and I want to dance with it and I want to flow with it. And, and, and more so I can see multiple possibilities in that unknown, not just one, not that I'm going to fail, not that I'm going to lose, but so many more possibilities. And I think that really is the game changer for me. Yes. So oh my goodness, definitely talking about a shift in perspective. It will change everything. Um, Gurpreet, thank you so much for being here today. All right, Sheila, yeah. your turn. <laughs> Tell <laughs> us about your amazing chapter. So my chapter, which is chapter eight, is fractal illumination, embody harmony in our chaotic world. And I think think we can all pretty much agree that the world has gotten more and more chaotic over the last decade or so. Um, and fractal illumination is an energy upgrade technique or modality that was gifted to me and my partner, Zach Hansen by spirit on a, uh, and I think that often people say that like, oh, this was downloaded or this was gifted to me by spirit when it comes to energy work. And we don't always explain what that means. So we chose to bring all the readers along with us, invite them into our house on the night that this information and energy source was downloaded to us. And so it's a fun adventure of how that came to be and then how that turned into the gift of fractal illumination, which we've now offered over a hundred times to groups around the world. <laughs> so, so thanks for that kind of a story in in the book, and thanks for inviting us into your <laughs> your home <laughs> and being kind of vulnerable about like what was going down with that. I love it when you all tell stories like that, where you're just really inviting us to get to know you at that next level. And often we're so in what's happening, we don't realize other people don't even get what we're talking about. Like, what do you mean download? <laughs> what do you mean? You know, all the things. Um, so I appreciate that. And the other thing I wanted to ask you about is the terms upgrade, up level have been repeated for this book specifically, higher frequency vibrations than what we've had access to before. This is interesting. This topic interests me. So yeah, like we're going to get an upgrade, but why, so why should we why care we... about that? Like what, what's, right. yeah. <laughs> so what is happening is that the world itself, Gaia is undergoing a, a shift. And so <clears throat> Through science, we know that the sun is getting closer, we're having more solar rays come in, and the energy in our world is increasing, and that impacts us because we are part of Gaia. We are part of the whole that creates this world. So as everything is shifting, the environment is shifting, we're shifting, our consciousness is also shifting. So humanity, though, it doesn't look like it right now. Right now, it looks like we're a mess. <laughs> That's because everything that was buried under the surface is coming up to be healed. And so as we watch that happen in politics and in all these areas of our life, it's also happening to us individually. So we're moving through this healing vibration just by being on earth right now. We're go undergoing this transformation so to us, we did not want to call or we felt like we weren't supposed to call fractal illumination a healing modality because it's not about being unhealed. It's about evolving into our next level of understanding of consciousness. And so that because it's a higher frequency, we would call higher consciousness, higher frequencies. I appreciate that explanation. Thank you for that. And thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. <laughs> 
So let's continue this conversation. Gurpreet, I'm going to start with you for this next question. What do you think the most important thing you want people to know about energy healing in general is? It's a big question, I know. <laughs> I believe, first of all, just believing in energy and knowing that we all, all are energy beings. We all are connected. We all are one. And a shift in one just shifts everything around us it does you know and and i think the key is knowing that this energy is a gift it's a gift that we are these energy vibrational beings because we can work with it we can play with it we can change it the way we want it so just with the thought alone we can either project an energy which will push people away from us or we can project energy that will bring better things in our life. And, and that's really, to me, that's, that's the message I would like to give. That your thought, it starts with a thought. And you, your thought makes you do actions that will lead to a life that you, whether you like it or not, but that's the life you will end up creating. So be very careful with what thought you want to think, because eventually it's going to create your life. Yeah, powerful message. Thank you for that. Sheila, how would you answer this one? Like, what's the most important thing you want people to know about energy healing as a whole? That it's our natural state. And um, the more attention we put on it, the, the more we will receive, the more we remain open the more we can evolve in our in our own consciousness, our own world. But to remember, we are already whole beings. We are complete. We are whole. So it really is about remembering, not always healing, right? Like it, we are by source. We are already healed, whole, and vibrant. And so the process is about coming back into our natural state. Yeah, I love that. And I love um, how you're all all of you actually are tying into each other with the, the next way that you talk about this. Caroline, how about you? What do you want to add to this? What's what is it for you about energy healing? Um, I think one message that's coming in now is well, two things actually. One is that we're all worthy because it's something that I've really struggled with. So yes, we're whole underneath, but we have all these experiences and then we can like all the things we've done. It's like, oh dear me. So we kind of can really deflect and this has been a big part of my journey the last few years but then the other thing is also that divine energy is self-writing it's got an intelligence and I think it can it can feel really complicated it can feel like if you're new to healing it's like oh my god there's so many modalities there's so much to learn there's so much this but actually if you have if you pray if you make a connection to source and you open up that you want to receive like the energy that will come will do the work so like yes you can tune in there's another energy modality that i'm i'm going to be bringing through with vortexes there's a lot of intentionality that we can have but even if you just say thank you god for healing me with my eyes right the energy that comes to us no it's it's got an intelligence it's got life within it so we don't have to know the details although science will all start backing up and it's all merging now which is great it's got its own wisdom so we can really surrender into it and that like when spirit was showing me this I was just like oh yeah oh yeah yeah just receive we can just receive and it will know what it's going to do in our body or in our life so yeah I think that's such a powerful message for people to let sink in they can surrender to that yeah. And that I love how you describe it as divine and alive and it's it's going to do the work, not a whole lot more you need to do in that process. Right. And this is so awesome. You are all so amazing and you're going to help people understand this at, at the next level. I hope I you know, when I say I want to wake people up to what's possible, that's exactly what I hope is happening to our viewers as they listen to you is like, oh, I never I didn't think about it like that. Mm -hmm. OK, and the way that you move forward in it is going to be different, which is going to make the change that you needed. Right. So um, opening up to receive is oh so hard sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> to learn how to do that. Um, okay, so 
this is perfect because I kind of want to keep talking about making that connection here. Sheila, I'm going to start with you on this next one. Connecting people with their own inner wisdom and healer and helping them to access that higher frequency of vibration is one way we, I think, as authentic healers empower people. We know we're not here to fix people. You've said it a couple times already. So what's one way you could share today with our listeners to help them make the connection? What's a foundational way you guys can help them understand if they've never even really tried before? I've heard a, a couple of you say some things already, but um, what do you think? How, do you, how would you start this one off? I would say that to remember it is our natural state. The, the rest of what we're experiencing is from programming that we've received. But if you go back to your childhood and find a time where you were playing and felt connected to nature, connected to imaginary friends, which were probably something more, you know, imagination is such an important aspect of connecting to the divine of that healing process. But as adults, we often push it to a side, the side and think that that's child's play. So if you just remember that child's play is actually the natural state, that's where we're meant to be. And don't take the healing process too seriously. You'll be able to find the wonder in life again. And through that, connect to the guidance so that you can take each step. I love that you said that about being a kid and that uh, those imaginary friends were probably more than we thought. And yeah, I love, I love just putting that little bug in people's ear today about what that was that will help parents, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Caroline, how about you with this one? Like, how would you help people make that connection in a simple way? Um, for me, what was coming in was about awareness. So noticing that difference you talked about, Sheila, like being in the child. And I can totally see when I'm in my child, I'm like, am I really allowed to, especially on the dance floor, am I really allowed to be like that? And I'm like dancing around like a unicorn and squealing and this joy is just like this. And then I'm like, oh no, but I'm 42. I'm not meant to do that. <laughs> and you can really notice. So like one of the, the tool, the tool in my chapter is about, um, body massage self-massage and so when you get used to being in your body with your focus you're allowed to be have your focus noticing your body because so much of our training is like outside doing 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 but when we bring a self more into our body and center you can feel I can feel if there's like a hurting child which is a slightly different feeling to my joyful child on this austere who I think I should be self <laughs> and just getting to notice when we step into these different like versions so then we can soften 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 and that to me then you can just be living in your flow more and more because you're leaning into the expanded gentle fun joyful self so awareness I think awareness is everything and you're dropping some very golden nuggets of awareness right now kind of other level awareness i think as i have moved into practice in all of these different ways but the one that you mentioned um discerning when you're in this one that feels this way and when you're in this other one that feels another, like oh my gosh if you can be aware of that that could change a lot of things um, I love that you're giving that example. Thank you for that. So, Gurpreet, how about you? Um, what would you say to help people listen in and connect at that next level? I think the biggest one for me is just, first of all, slowing down and finding yourself in whatever you are doing, wherever you are, and knowing like Caroline said, being aware that you're not your body, you're not your thought, you're not the perception of these people around you, you're not your job, you're not your, you know, your family, you are what? You are a free spirit. And having that awareness that you are a free spirit living on this Gaia, having a divine, you know, experience, and, and then trying to understand, backing off a little bit, just stepping away from where you are and stepping into yourself. I also, my favorite one is also going back to my inner child, you know, and seeing myself just playful and just being 
like a flowy wavy river you know that just just flows with life just goes with has no just you know has no worries has no you know fears of where am I going to turn what's going to happen it just goes and goes and that's just connecting to that flowy divinity in yourself you know and, and centering yourself slowing down backing off from everything and finding yourself right there breathing into your heart I I, de I, I mean, I cannot emphasize enough how big of a difference it makes when you genuinely just breathe into your heart. That's where you connect with your deeper self right away. And, and to me, that has just shown miracles, has given me answers I've been seeking. And yeah, it's just, it's just incredible. That's what so, I, I love it. And I'm like breathing deeper as I'm listening to right into this space here with my, I'm wearing my heart today too. So like, I'm, that's just reminding me where to breathe into. Um, so huge thanks to all three of you for saying yes to this project, but also to accept that challenge I gave you of writing your hearts and souls out onto the pages for other people to read. And you guys, this is um, also their master tools that they're sharing, the things that helped the authors heal, transform, up level and upgrade, move to the level of life where they are living in more joy. And this is so much more than a book. It's a community of people like our authors today who actually care and want to support your next steps and your next question and the next piece of your journey right so um, if something that one of our authors said today is giving you the goosebumps or making you curious or you just have a question just drop into the show notes because i've had i have them all hooked up with their websites there and i want you to go explore and see what they're up to because it's amazing and there is a lot of awesomeness there to find so last words, Caroline, what do you want our listeners to leave with today? What's the most important message for you? Be true to yourself. That's what the chapter has really um, crystallized for me. Every time we follow our truth, that's what we're doing when we're following our intuition. And that's when we liberate ourselves and we give everybody else the permission to do the same. So really checking in. Does this feel good? Does this feel contracted? And go with that expanded choice. Nice. Thank you. Gurpreet, how about you? Last words. I would say connect with yourself because when you connect with your own divinity, it flows inside out. That's when you see the world the way it is. And, and that's what connects you to this universe. Nice. Thank that's you. Yeah, so you guys get that, um, that both of them said the same thing in two different ways, which is why I do these books, <laughs> because we need your all of your unique voices in a way that somebody's going to be able to hear, right? And so coming in for the answers, man, it took me a while to learn this lesson, you guys. Sheila, you're going to close us out today. What's your message? You are not alone. We are all in this together and divine love or love of yourself and others is flowing even when you're not noticing. The chaos of the world is about our global healing. It is not that we are going into some dark time. We're coming out of that and it's a time to celebrate as we step into this. Mm, perfect. Perfect message to finish today. Um, authors, thank you so much for what you do in the world. And thank you for being here today to share it with everyone. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. So for our listeners today, you can come and join our book launch party. I've got information down below. It's going to be Friday, June 9th at 10 a.m. Eastern. We're going to join with all of the energy healers, Oracle authors, and we're going to have a blast. So um, you can get the Zoom info below. And if you happen to be watching this interview sometime after that date, well, that just means you can hop over to Amazon and grab your copy of this beautiful book. Lastly today, everyone remember your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it is time to be brave. See you next time, everyone.